Hello everyone, my name is Julia and welcome to lesson number 17 of the Flow Acrylic Ministry. Today we're going to be doing a technique where we pour with two different cuts. And I titled this lesson, Two in One, The Fear of the Lord. Um, so before we get started, I'd like you to join me in prayer. So if you would bow your head. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this time to be able to sit with you. We just ask that you be present with us, Lord. We pray that you would teach your truth. We pray that you would write your words on our hearts and minds. Father, that they would transform our lives and our hearts so that we would be the people that you have called us to be. Teach us how to fear the Lord in reverence. And teach us what that means. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So the only thing special you're going to need is two different cups. And I, these are cups that I've used before, so they're a bit dirty. And I'm just going to be reusing them. We're going to be pouring with them. And I'm going to start by reading something I wrote. Um, so in the Old Testament, there were numerous stories of God bringing his justice down on his people as a result of their sins. <laughs> Actually, if you read the Old Testament, particularly like the, uh, the prophetic books of the Old Testament, God is pretty harsh on his people. Um, and so you really see a lot of the wrath of God, um, but then similarly, in the New Testament, we hear about God pouring out his grace and love for all humanity by sending his son to die on a cross. But the God in the New Testament is the same as the God in the Old Testament, right? It's not, it's not he's, he hasn't changed his character. He is the same all the time. God <laughs> is both fully just and gracious at the same time. This can be challenging to wrap our heads around, or at least it is for me. A good understanding of God's justice leads us to a reverent fear of the Lord. God's grace does not give us permission to sin, rather leads us to repentance and freedom in Christ. God's love for us is seen in that he is both just and gracious at the same time. I really like to think of the analogy of a child because that's what we are to God. We are his children. And when you have a child and they do something they're not supposed to, what do you do as a parent? You discipline them. Do you discipline them because you're trying to be mean and punish them? No, you discipline them because you love them. And so actually God's discipline is a form of grace as well. And so that's kind of how I have come to understand God's justice and his grace at the same time. Whereas when I was younger, it was maybe confusing because it was like I read the Old Testament and God seems like this wrathful, mean dog that's bringing down calamity on his people because of their sins. And then you read about God's love and grace in the New Testament with Jesus, and it's kind of like confusing to understand how God can be both of those at the same time. At least it is for me. It has been for me. So the next thing I'm going to do is read a scripture, and this is from Hebrews 10, 26 through 31, and it says, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sin is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment and a raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Anyone who has rejected the law of Moses died without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished who has trampled on the Son of God underfoot, who has treated as an unholy thing the blood of the covenant that sanctified them, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know him who said, It is mine to avenge, I will repay. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. And that's Hebrews 10, 26-31. I feel like 
like that scripture is something that you could just like sit with. And I'm going to repeat this part because it really strikes me is for we know him who said is mine to avenge. I will repay. And that's what God says to us that it, it, he will avenge and um, he will repay that it's not for us to judge or um, exact revenge or anything because uh, the Lord is uh, God. Our father is the judge and he um, judges per with perfect justice. So let us uh, imagine that the canvas is us and we're going to say that the first cup is God's justice and it's like God's justice being poured out on us. And then the second cup is God's grace and it's like God's grace being poured out on us because we actually get both of them, right? We don't get just God's gr grace or just his justice. We get both. Um, and so we're going to, and I'm actually going to do kind of two opposite colors. So for God's grace, I'm going to do kind of like reds and oranges. And then for God's, I mean, for God's justice, I'm going to do reds and oranges. And then for God's grace, we're going to do like blues and greens. So they're like two opposing colors sort of. So for the first step, we're going to fill up the first cup, which is going to represent God's justice. And we're going to pour it on one side of the canvas. And while we are doing that, I want you to think about what do you think about when you think about God's justice? How do you understand God's justice? How does this make you feel towards God? So, um... I think because of maybe the kind of environment in the family I grew up in that was very, there was a lot of uh, very strict kind of discipline. I really understood what discipline meant and I really um, understood what it meant to kind of like fear an authority figure because of fear of, of discipline or punishment. And so for me, the concept of being able to fear God because of his justice I mean, that was easy for me to really understand because it's kind of, I already kind of had that view of my parents or particularly my father that it was like, I have to act right because if I don't, I'm going to get disciplined and I don't want that. So I'm going to be a good girl, you know? So there was a sense of understanding that you follow the rules because um, if you don't follow the rules, there's going to be consequences. And so I really already kind of had this a notion of, of that um, from, I think, a fairly early age. But actually, I think as I've gotten older, I've come to think of God's justice as comforting. Because it was like, you know, it kind of takes, a, 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 I think my understanding of the Lord being almighty and fully just and judging completely correctly and exacting, you know, and, and, that, and that he acts on, on those judgments. To me, it, it, it brought a sense of peace because it's like, you know, I don't have to, I, that's not my job, right? My job is not to have to judge others. My job is not to have to discipline others. My job is not to exact revenge on others. My job is not to um, take out my anger on others. That's not my job. You know, um, my job is to forgive. My job is to love. Um, my job is to not hold on to grudges and bitterness and resentment. And understanding God's justice to me helped me with being able to forgive and not hold on to bitterness and resentment. Um... 
But I also think that understanding God's justice for me has, it does have a impact on when maybe, maybe I am struggling with temptations. Maybe I am struggling with the temptation to sin. And my understanding of God and his justice is a good reminder of why I want to flee from that temptation rather than embracing it and then falling into sin. And also realizing that when we knowingly, when we as Christians knowingly sin, that God judges us more harshly than when we sin because we we don't realize what we're doing is wrong. And that's kind of even what Hebrews 10 is talking about. It's like, when we didn't have any knowledge of the truth, when we didn't have any knowledge that something was wrong, that's one thing. But when we knowingly have knowledge of the truth, that God has revealed those things to us, and then we still kind of walk in disobedience and walk in sin rather than turning from that. Um, that that's kind of a different, uh, different um, issue. And that we, that, I mean, as it says, how much more severely do you think someone deserves to be punished? Um, and, you know, if you think about it, too, just like from a child's standpoint, when a child does something when they're a toddler and they have no clue that that's wrong, I mean, parents don't discipline the same as when the child is now a teenager and, um, and you know, they, they are full aware and have full understanding that what they're doing is wrong. Um, and... God judges way more uh, harshly. When we have knowledge of that something is sinful or wrong. I also think just like understanding his God's justice is kind of like we also realize kind of an understanding of God's holiness that he is without fault that he is without sin and that how different we are from him um, and different in our knowledge, our wisdom, different in our understanding, different in what we see and perceive. And just like, I think kind of understanding God's justice to me is, is it brings kind of an awe factor of God of like, what, uh, you know, a, a wow, or, um, but also a, it brings about humility too, because you realize how amazing and powerful and set apart God is from us as humans and that we are like little ants in comparison. Um, and so just having kind of that reverence for God or realizing how far set apart he is in his holiness and 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 in his ability to be just but that despite that he has a nearness um, and a love and a tenderness for us as his children um and that he has facilitated us to be in a very near personal relationship with him through his son Jesus. So it's, to me, looking at God's kind of justice and how it's, it's just, 
it takes it almost like it's like taking your breath away a little bit um but i also think it like kind of is a it motivate it motivates me to live the life that god has wants for me and to be obedient to him so i'm going to pour this on one side here And now I'm going to take my second cup and we're going to do the same thing but with the other colors and we're going to say that this cup is kind of representing God's grace and so for this part I want you to think about how do you think about God's grace how do you understand God's grace and how does that make you feel towards God so in some of my previous lessons we have talked quite a bit about God's grace already um, so we kind of, I think, a little bit be kind of just refreshing ourselves. And I'm going to go back to kind of the analogy we talked about with justice and if you have a child. When you have a child and they do something wrong and you discipline them, you you discipline them because they need to learn a lesson. You discipline them so that they know what they did was wrong. You discipline them because you want them to be safe and healthy. And usually what they're doing is, you know, either harmful or, or something not good. Your discipline is for love. But you also, when you discipline, I mean... You give the child, you still love them, you still give them a second chance. You know, there may be consequences that that child has to go through to rebuild trust or, or um, regain responsibility. Um, you know, your discipline sometimes comes with consequences and someone has to kind of go through the process of that but your grace also means that at the end of the day you love them you cherish them you still are you don't disown them they are still your child you still plan on giving them a second chance and at the end of the day there is nothing that child could do to make you not love them <laughs> not cherish them and not desire what is best for them right and so that's kind of the way god's grace is it's that you know we we mess up we fell we have faults we fall to temptation you know there are so many things that we mess up we hurt others but God says the punishment for all of those things you have done should be that you go to hell, that you have an eternity apart from my presence, that you do no, no longer get to have a relationship with me because your sin is, has se separated you from me. That's what that would do and God's grace is saying you know what I love you so much that I sent part of myself I sent Jesus my own son to take upon himself those sins so that they are not held against you so that you still have an opportunity of a reconciled relationship with me you still have an opportunity to spend eternity with me in heaven Um. 
And so we have God's grace, God's forgiveness poured out for us through his son, Jesus. But even though God is full of grace and mercy, he is still also a God of justice. And he will, he, and he does discipline us. Because his discipline is an act of love. And so now we get both, right? God is not this wrathful God that is mean and, um, and punishing humanity because of their disobedience. Mm -hmm. He is those things, but he is also, at the same time, gracious and merciful. Mm. And has enabled mm. all of humanity the opportunity to be in relationship with him and have forgiveness for their sins. And so I'm going to kind of tilt this canvas to get this paint to run over the edges. And I don't want to lose all my red and um, orange. So God is to uh, both both of these characters at the same time, full of grace and mercy, but he's all powerful, just, and is intolerant to sin at the same time. So I really do, you know, I I, I think. Some people, because of their thinking that God is like this mean, all-powerful God that's bringing out calamity onto humanity, have turned away from God or, or, or run from God. But to me, fear of the Lord and understanding of his justice makes me realize how much I can trust God. How much that um, I can lean into him. How much that means that he is as much a protector of me as he is um, is a God that is exacting um, punishment. Just like a, f a father, a child will embrace their father as a protector and want to be near to a father because that father's arms are around them, protecting them. And that that father disciplines out of love and grace and mercy as a form of loving and protecting that child. That God is the same. That is, that is what he has done for humanity. Um, he sent his son Jesus as an embrace to all of humanity to say, I love you. But within that embrace, he says... I'm not going to tolerate sin because sin is not good. It's not good for you. It's not good for other people. It's not good for uh, the earth. It's not good for so many things. And and so um, as a loving father, I am not going to allow you to continue in sin. And, um, and so that's, to me, how I've come to kind of picture or understand these two sides of God Almighty. And that they don't contradict each other. They actually complement each other. And so just like we have a wonderful painting here that's got kind of two opposing colors. But they've kind of intermingled together to form this one painting that's very beautiful. And they complement each other very much. That's how God's justice and his grace complement each other as well. So God bless and Jesus loves you.
I hope you'll join us for lesson number 18. And on lesson number 18, we're going to continue kind of same kind of topic and talk more about freedom in Christ and holiness. So I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.